Before moving on into the next lesson, try this warm up. So I've got a few different equations here and I'd like you to solve them. This of course builds on the previous lesson where you were asked to solve exponential equations using a common base. So that's your starting point. Pause the video, try these questions, and then check back in to see how you do. All right, here are my solutions. So for the first one, I can turn a 27 into a power with a base of 3. It's 3 to the exponent 3. So I have powers with the same base equal to each other. That means the exponents are equal to each other, which means x equals 3. This one, trickier than any of the examples in the previous lesson, but I did wanted to see if you could do it. So 2 and 8 can be represented as powers with the same base. 8 is 2 to the exponent 3. 3, or sorry, 3 and 27 can be powers with the same base. 27 is 3 to the exponent 3. So 2 to the exponent 3 over 3 to the exponent 3 is just 2 thirds to the exponent 3. So now we have powers with the same base. The base is 2 over 3. Since the powers are equal to each other, that means the exponents must be equal to each other. x equals 3. For the last one, 25 can be written as 5 squared. So now you have powers with the same base. Here I have a power of a power, so multiply your exponents. 2 times 3x plus 1 is your exponent on the first power. It's equal to the exponent on the other power. So 2 times 3x plus 1 equals x minus 8. Expand out the brackets. So 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 1 is 2. So I have 6x plus 2 on the left, x minus 8 on the right. Identify your like terms and collect them. So 6x minus x on the left, negative 8 minus 2 on the right. 6x minus x is 5x, negative 8 minus 2 is negative 10. Divide both sides by 5 to get x by itself. We end up with x equals negative 2. Hopefully you could do all that. If not, I highly recommend you review the previous lesson before moving on. Uh, otherwise, let's keep going. Sometimes you're going to get exponential equations that you can't solve using a common base. And so we need a method of solving those equations. Uh, and that's where technology comes in. So we're going to solve exponential equations using technology in this lesson. So our goal today is to be able to identify when common base cannot be used to solve an exponential equation and use the appropriate technology to solve the equation. So as I said, sometimes you'll have exponential equations that cannot be solved using a common base. And so the technology that I've been alluding to is basically any graphing technology. You may have used a graphing calculator before. Uh, perhaps you've even used this one, which I'm going to use. Uh, here I've given you the web site to use, desmos.com slash calculator. Um, it's a free web graphing calculator. And you can also download the free app if you want it on your phone or your iPad or something like that. But this is the technology that I'm going to use in this lesson. Okay, so here I have an equation to solve. 3 to the exponent x equals 5. And right off the bat, I can see that there's no way I can write these as powers with the common base. 5 can't be written as 3 to the exponent something. Um, or at least it, you can't do it with nice numbers, so I'll say that. So we need a way to solve this. So I basically have three steps that I'm going to use in order to solve an equation like this. So because there's no common base, we're going to break it into two separate equations. And the way we're going to do that is just break it into the left side and the right side of the equal sign. So I'm going to make an equation called y equals 3 to the exponent x and another equation called y equals 5. Okay, so I've, I've broken this equation into two separate equations and then I'm going to graph both of those equations. So I'll, in my graphing calculator, 
In this case, I'm using the Desmos graphing calculator. I'm going to type two separate equations, and it's going to make two separate graphs. And then I'm going to use the point of intersection of those two graphs to find the value of x to solve my equation. Now, the reason this works is because we know the left side of my equation is equal to my right side of my equation. So at the point of intersection, that's where both graphs are equal to each other. So when they are equal to each other on the graph, they're equal to each other in this equation. And so when we solve for x on the graph at the point of intersection, we're actually solving for x in this equation. I'll show you what I mean. So when you are on the Desmos graphing calculator, it'll look like this if you're on a computer. If you're on your smartphone trying to use this, it might look a little bit different, but the basics are the same. You have a spot where you type your equations. So I type those two equations, the y equals 3 to the x and y equals 5, and Desmos automatically makes a graph for you. Now, I adjusted the scale so that I could uh, see everything, but you just, um, you can click and drag and zoom in, zoom out on the graph so you can find the point of intersection. Now, just a note here, if you want to type an, a, a, an equation that has an exponent, this is your exponent button down here. The other button, this one right here, that's only if you want an exponent of 2. But if you want any other exponent, you use this button that says a to the exponent b. So when I typed this in, I went y equals 3, and then I pressed this button to get the exponent, then I typed x. Okay, so I typed in my two equations, it made the graph, and then I clicked on the point of intersection and it gave me the coordinates, 1.465 comma 5. So remember what coordinates means, it gives you the x and the y coordinate. So of course y equals 5, because y equals 5, that's in the equation. But x is equal to 1.465. So when it gives me the coordinates for the point of intersection, it actually tells me the value of x. So back to my example here, 3 to the x equals 5, I typed in those two equations, the left side and the right side of the equation, and I got this as my point of intersection. So I can say, therefore, x equals 1.465. Okay, so I just solved the equation. Now, try these on your own. So you're going to follow the same method. You're going to break each equation into two separate equations. You're going to graph both of them. You're going to find the point of intersection. And remember, the x-coordinate of your point of intersection tells you what x is. You don't have to do any thinking about that. Now, just a note before you get going on this one. Notice how the exponent is not just x, but it's x minus 4. So when you're in Desmos, you might have to put some brackets around, around the x minus 4. Otherwise, Desmos is going to type something like 2 to the x and then minus 4 like that. But you want 2 to the x minus 4. So you should use brackets when you type it into Desmos. All right, so if you are doing this lesson through AMDEC, uh, you will have Desmos underneath this video on the lesson page. You can try these examples. They're written out for you on the, on the page there. And you can also check your answers underneath. So make sure you're getting the right answers. If you run into any trouble, just reach out and I will do my best to help. Otherwise, move on to the practice questions and away you go.